Ignaz Misner, Shandor and Bougie Ambrouche, as well as Alfred and Lili Viragne and their children, all lived in the apartment house that Ignaz had built on Teres Kurut. The Virains would have dinner before eight, because on the hour, they listened to the German language news of the BBC. Growing up with Fräuleins fluent in German, the middle-class Jewish family had no difficulty understanding the news in German, which they preferred to the news in Hungarian. In the evening broadcast on the 17th of December 1942, they listened to British Foreign Secretary Eden reporting on the concentration camps and the mass annihilation of Polish Jews. They couldn't have learnt about this from the Hungarian media, nor even the Hungarian service of the BBC, which generally neglected the situation of the Jews, on advice from British intelligence not to appear overly pro-Jewish, for fear that the anti-Semitic Hungarian population would not support the Allied forces. Anti-Semitism assumed an important role in the fundamental ideology of Miklós Horthy's system, which had been created on the ruins of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Hungary suffered one of the most traumatic blows in its history. Dismembering the monarchy, the Treaty of Trianon annexed two-thirds of the country, together with millions of Hungarians, to the successor states. Society unequivocally condemned this and considered it to be a tragedy, sentiments increasingly exploited by state propaganda, which essentially held the Hungarian jury to be collectively guilty. Seeking a revision of the Treaty of Trianon, Hungarian foreign policy in the 1930s increasingly rubbed shoulders with Nazi Germany. In domestic policy, extreme anti-Jewish voices, parties and movements were growing louder. In the late 1930s, anti-Jewish laws were enacted one after the other, causing tens of thousands to lose their livelihood. Ignaz and Istvan Misner and Shandor Ambrush too were expelled from the Bar Association. The Jewish laws in place, the Hungarian jury also suffered the loss of tens of thousands of people. In 1941, the Home Affairs authorities deported some 20,000 Jews to Kamyonets Podilsky in the occupied areas of the former Soviet Union. In the meantime, in the Misner's home on Teddy's Boulevard, the family sought to maintain a semblance of normal life. Ignaz's daughter, Margit, 68 at the time, held the family together. Her father was unable to comprehend what was going on around him. The Jewish laws had expelled him from the Bar Association, stripped him of his lands in the Transdanubia, and even forced him to give the family tableware and his golden pocket watch to the Hungarian National Bank. His great-grandson, Jula, graduated top marks from grammar school in 1943, wanted to study medicine, but under the laws he stood little chance as a Jew. Finally, thanks to Margit's remarkable social network, he was able to start university in September. However, the next spring semester was interrupted when in March the Wehrmacht occupied Hungary. This, in turn, led to the introduction of even more drastic measures. In April, Shandor Ambrush, together with many other Budapest lawyers, journalists and public figures, was arrested by the Gestapo and deported to Hortiliget. They were driven to Dachau on foot, where Shandor Ambrush perished. By then, those at home couldn't even listen to the radio, because the Jews' radios had been confiscated. Lili's husband, Alfred, himself handed in the world receiver they had bought four years earlier. The bicycle that had been Dula's graduation gift, as well as the automobile, had to be turned in. On Easter Monday, Lili and Alfred went to the funeral of a distant converted relative. Going outside, it was the first time they had to wear on their coats the yellow Star of David marking Jews. In May... Yula too was called up for labour service. Working in the Buk Mountains under inhumane conditions, he somehow managed to escape in the autumn. A Catholic girl named Clara Boyer, university classmate of his, hid him and his friends in an abandoned factory. By June, 
Jews from all around the countryside were being deported, mainly to Auschwitz. The only remaining Jews were in Budapest, moved together in houses marked with yellow stars. The flat of the Ombrush was allocated to a detective. Unfailingly believing in the legal order, Justice and Governor Horty, Ignaz Misner wrote a letter requesting that he, the respectable lawyer and his family, be exempt from the Jewish laws. His moving letter fell on deaf ears. In October, the Arrow Cross Party took over power, sealing the fate of Budapest Jews. People desperately sought to obtain protective passes from the embassies of neutral states, or to get into the safe houses of these states. This did not always help. Arrow Cross henchmen would tear up the passes, and more than once they rounded up the residents of the safe house and shot them in the Danube. Margit's sister Gisela and her family too were dragged from a safe house and the janitor of their own house reported her brother Istvan and had him taken away. Ignaz Misner starved to death in the Pest ghetto. We shall never know how Margit and a few other family members survived. The fate of Jews was often shaped by anonymous helpers and informants and often miracles. After the liberation, everyone's first thought was to seek out family members. Margit had lost her father, brother, sister, brother-in-law, nephew and countless other relatives. On the Pollitzer side of the family, 18 of her relatives perished in the Holocaust. The Misner, Morgenstern, Mark Breit, Hai, Österreicher and others disappeared without trace. 